But am I gassing you up? No, I'm telling you facts. I'm telling you straight up facts in this video. This isn't me hyping you up for no reason. This is facts. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are going to be discussing the Detroit Lions. Yes, we're back with the Lions talk. I'm excited to be back with that. And as you guys can see from the board, not done yet. Are the Lions done? Is this season over? Let's get it started. No, so I got a shout out, Dosa D, uh, man, because it was actually the first time I went live on YouTube. And, uh, you know, guys don't know. Dosa D, uh, he put out a lot of good content for the Detroit Lions. Welcome in everybody to another video. Glad you guys are here. And yes, we're diving back into some Detroit Lions talk. And I think I have a good video planned for you guys today in this video. But before we get into any of that, I first off want to say thank you to everybody that stopped into the live stream yesterday. Uh, we watched the Bears and the Buccaneers game. It was super fun, man. We just chilled. Uh, we didn't have to like stay super locked into the game, but it was fun to just kind of react to. Unfortunately, the Bears did win, but that could end up being a good thing. You never know. I mean, they're both NFC teams. Possibly the Tampa Bay Buccaneers come out as a team that's a, a wild card threat, and maybe it's a good thing that they lost. You never know until the end of the year, so you, you just never know. But it was a fun time. I'm definitely going to probably do more of those streams where we look at other games as well. We'll probably do some college streams as well when it it comes that time for Michigan and I would like to mix in some more gaming streams like kind of get that thing going because those are fun as well so I do want to appreciate all of you guys for stopping in and also you know shout out to Shane I think he was the first one in those people that stayed made the whole time those people that were kind of in and out shout out to you guys if you guys want to be involved in the next one all you got to do is just click on the video man if you see me live just click on it that's all you got to do just boom click on it you're here and then, then we can join you can join the party come on in all right so today's video is going to be maybe a little bit more of a uh, positive outlook on things okay maybe just more of a, a good feeling type of video but I actually have numbers and stats okay here I'm not just you know trying to just say whoa we're believe 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 be happy like that's not what this is this is like legit maybe a reason to look at things maybe just a little bit differently because the media right now has been very very negative and i get it it's it's going to be um it's easy to be super negative right now and i'm not saying that's a bad thing um uh, because you know we've been kind of negative with certain things and sometimes you have to do it you know you gotta be you gotta be negative about certain things super important to be honest with yourself and you know to be honest with what's going on but also you know look at numbers look at stats okay and sometimes the numbers and stats maybe give you a reason to possibly be a little little bit optimistic and a little bit positive about what's going on in the future and while I know everything seems really bleak and dull right now and it's like oh man this is just not exciting maybe this brings a little bit more more fire back to you right back to you uh because right now it is the bye week so not much going on but maybe for next week maybe it's a nice little prep uh heading into next week as the Lions get ready to face the Jacksonville Jaguars now of course the Lions have to do everything that I'm saying on the field right it can't be just oh I said it so now it's good like no they have to go do it and obviously none of us control that so hopefully they do go do it on the field because all of us at the end of the day want to see this team win but uh let's touch on it man Let, let's just discuss this next really the next seven games I would say specifically but the rest of the Lions schedule and maybe just a different way to look at things maybe a little bit more of a a positive outlook and reasons that you know you still still should be excited at least for now until you know we see the Lions on the field we see what they do Lions are off to a one and three start we know that's not super exciting and when you look at the rest of the NFC North it just makes you even more depressed just like man the Packers aren't losing the Bears are four and one the Vikings they're not doing so well but they're one and three it's like oh man we're one and three like this is awful you know the season's over and you're just, you're just upset I get that I feel that thing just seems to be completely wrong with the Lions and one and three is not good like don't let me lie to you one and three is not good there's no doubt about it but if we take maybe a deeper look and we look at some other things, maybe there's still some reason to possibly believe in this team. Now, there's been a lot of Caldwell talk around the media. I don't know if we're going to do a video on that or not. We may. We may do a video. I'm not sure. I've done a lot of videos about Caldwell in the past. We may do one. We may not. Uh, but we're not really going to be focusing on that in today's video. We're focusing on the task at hand, the team at hand, what we have uh, for the Detroit Lions. But we will bring up one of Caldwell's seasons because I think it's an important thing uh, to bring up. Look at the Lions so far this season. And you look at that 1-3 and three record. On the surface, it looks pretty darn bad, right? You're like, oh, 1-3. and three. That's not good. It's just not good good it's not good enough but if we dive into this one and three record maybe a little bit deeper maybe there's still some reason to be optimistic and we'll touch on some players as well so let's look at the Lions one and three record into detail just a little bit more detail okay Lions one and three let's break it down game by game first game the Lions play the Chicago Bears it leads six to 23 in this game and I know blowing the lead is never a good thing and I've used this every single time I bring it up so it's not an excuse it's just facts uh, when all of our cornerbacks went down we were in trouble and Tony McRae was attacked over and over we gave up that lead either way you lost at the end of the day you lost the game you also had a drop by DeAndre Swift which I get it you know it happens but Matthew Stafford he would have pulled off one of his famous clutch comebacks that you know we've seen him do time and time again and that keep that in mind because that will come back to be important when we keep uh, diving into this video but he had opportunity to pull off one of those comebacks if switch ca swift catches that pass we win that game we're one and oh and stafford gets another comeback to start the season and even though we're a little concerned we're thinking to ourselves okay we just need to get corners back right if we can get okuda back we're feeling a little bit better heading into week two and obviously one and oh is a lot better than you know oh and one and right now the bears would be what three and two and you know that's 
that's that's a big difference. It's a big difference. Unfortunately, we weren't able to hold off. So we know that game like wasn't bad. It's not like the Lions went out there got manhandled. They had injuries on defense. They couldn't stop it. They just kept attacking Tony McRae. And then offensively, you dropped the pass for the win. Okay, next week, next game against the Green Bay Packers, 21 to 42. This was a big loss for the Lions. And on the scoreboard, it looks terrible. I broke it down into the game. This game should have been more competitive. The Lions truly did beat themselves in this game. Now you're 0 2. So instead of saying, okay, we're at least 1 and 1, no, now you're 0 2. Now all of a sudden the pressure's on, and the Lions come out and they get a win. They get a win over an Arizona team that was coming in undefeated. All right, they were flying high. We were going to Arizona. This was at home. This was in Arizona. I know there's no fans, but it was in Arizona. Lions pulled off a win. So all of a sudden we're 1 and 2, and we're thinking as fans, like, oh, snap, okay. Okay, I see there's there's actually some potential here. You know, defense picks it up. They start making plays. We get three turnovers. Like, it's not looking that bad. And then all of a sudden, week four comes, and, you know, we play the Saints. And I think the injuries really made this feel a lot worse uh, because of all the injuries coming in. We lose the Saints by six points. And if Okuda knocks that pass down, maybe we go win it. Even after a disgusting second quarter performance and beginning of the third quarter, if Okuda knocks that down, the Lions get the ball back. Matthew Stafford one last time, who is phenomenal in the fourth quarter versus the Saints and he has the ball in his hands down six potentially a chance to go down the field and go win the football game so that's what your first four games look like all right not an easy first four games by any means and I'm not again I'm not using this as an excuse I just want to point this out because I think it's gonna be important as we get in this video so your first four games were against Chicago Bears who, who are now four and one we're against the Packers who are still undefeated Arizona Cardinals who now fell to two and two one of those losses being against us Saints who are also sitting at 500 with their losses uh coming to the Raiders and the Packers so that's not an easy first four games I mean, you could potentially, those four teams could make the playoffs. There's a chance that those four teams all make the playoffs and those four teams at least all finish 500 or better. That's not an easy first four games to start the season. A lot of people thought the Lions would start this year one and three, but still had confidence because they looked at the rest of the schedule and said, okay, maybe they can pick this up. And when I broke down my initial reactions to this schedule was that the first four games are tough and the last four games are tough. And in the middle is where the Lions can pick things up. So you're one and three to come out of it. And honestly, you had one, you were one pass away from being two and two and potentially a drive away from being three and one. And I'm not trying to just you know, say this to get you all hyped up, but seriously, I mean, that's what it is, but you're one in three, right? You're one in three, you're coming out, and now your next seven games, you get a bye week, so this is honestly, I think, a really good time for a bye week, because the Lions need to regroup, and they need to go focus, and understand that they have a big opportunity in front of them in their next seven games. The Lions' next seven games consist of an 8-20 and 20 combined record with teams like the Jags, who are one in three, the Falcons, who are 0 four, the Colts, who are three and one, uh, the Vikings, who are one and three, the football team, who's one and three, who's been pretty bad, who's been awful less since, and they've just benched their quarterback, the Panthers, who are two and two and the Texans who are 0 and four. Those are your next seven games. Now, I know some people are saying, well, we're not going to win those anyways, right? We're not going to win those games. And again, we may not. We have to go see it on the field. But those are your next seven. So clearly, that's an opportunity. And clearly, that's way easier than what your first four were, right? So maybe you pick it up. Maybe you start to get some wins and you can pull a streak together. But why are we not done yet? Why is there a chance that we can do that? Well, I know some people are looking at this saying, you know what? We should have given up Patricia. We should have fired this dude during the bye week. But what if I said this? What if the Lions would have fired Jim Caldwell after their one and three start. What if the Lions would have said, okay, you know what, Jim, you started one and three. This is back in 2016. The Lions started one and three on the season. The last time we made the playoffs, we started one and three. What if the Lions would have said, Jim, you know what? One and three is not good enough. We fire you after this. Because honestly, if you look at the year before, they started one and seven. They start they started one and seven the year before. Oh and five. They finished seven and nine is a good finish, but you know, the season's basically over when you're one and seven. You started one and seven. Next year you start one and three. The Lions, you know, could have potentially said something like that, like if they want to be very bold, but they didn't. They're like, okay, you know what? No, we're going to pump the brakes. Okay, it wasn't the easiest first four games because it wasn't. Their first four games were not super easy that they had to play. Um, they lost to teams like the Titans and the Packers. I mean, they were not easy games that the Lions had to play in the first four and the Bears. So the Lions are looking at this saying, okay, look, you lost two divisional games here, first four, like we have, the Bears and Packers, oddly enough. Um, but look, okay, it's only one and three. We can see if you can bounce back. And look what they did. They bounced back. They win eight of their next nine games. The schedule really lightens up. They win eight of their next nine games against teams like the Eagles, the Rams, the, the Redskins, who are now the football team, the Jaguars, the Vikings twice. All of a sudden, it's like, okay, wait, this team's back. They're going to win the eight or the next nine. They're nine and four. So a team that was one and three is all of a sudden nine and four. Now they lose their next three games. Against playoff teams, they lose their final three. They back in the playoffs, and actually they lose their last four games. They lose to the Giants, the Cowboys, and the Packers, and they really weren't that competitive. Those were three playoff teams, and you weren't super competitive. Stafford was dealing with a little injury. You weren't super competitive. 
But the Lions said, okay, you know what? Let's see if they can obviously, you know, turn this thing around. And they turned it around. They had opportunities because they didn't face the best the next eight games. Uh, their next eight, nine opponents weren't the best. The Lions had an opportunity to turn around. And that's what the Lions have in front of them right now. And they did then. And this was the year that Stafford had his crazy eight fourth quarter comebacks. Now, if you look at this team, there's two sides to it. Some people look at it and, you know, they, they love it. And some people don't because they're saying, oh, well, well, they were just all comebacks. We didn't beat any of the good teams in the regular season. They were just comebacks against bad teams. And Matthew Stafford pulls off somehow miraculously eight comebacks, which is now the NFL record in that season, right? It's, it's absolutely insane. Eight comebacks in one season, and the Lions go nine and seven. And nine and seven is now big because that was our last playoff year. And obviously that quote that Bob Quinn didn't actually ever say, nine and seven isn't good enough, always comes up. But he never actually said that. It's just kind of interpreted from what he said. But either way, right, you finish at your nine and seven, you get into the playoffs. They didn't count that year out. The Lions didn't give up on that season. And that's what we need to see the Detroit Lions do now. And now some people are looking at saying, okay, well, hold up. Matthew Stafford's not playing like Matthew Stafford did then. Because Matthew Stafford is not playing at the same level like he was in 2016. It's actually what's crazy about that is Matthew Stafford is pretty darn comparable what he's on pace for to what he did in 2016. Look at this, for example. In 2016, Matthew Stafford had 24 touchdowns and 10 interceptions, 4,300 passing yards, 65% completion percentage, 7.3 yards per attempt, and a 93 passer rating. In 2020, okay, which is apparently a terrible start for Matthew Stafford, that's what people are telling me, Matthew Stafford so far has over 1,000 yards passing, 8 touchdowns to 3 picks, a 60.6 .6 completion percentage, 7.6 yards per attempt, and a 93.8 rating, okay? His rating is 0.5 higher than it was in 2016. Through these first First four games and apparently Matthew Stafford's off to a completely awful start and a lot of people are hoping that he's going to turn this around. Matthew Stafford on pace is on pace for 32 touchdowns and 12 interceptions. Compare that to 24 and 10. So even though Matthew Stafford is arguably off to an awful start because the expectations he set were so high in 20, what was it, 20, uh, last 19, 2019, this year it doesn't look so great. I know Stafford hasn't been perfect, there's no doubt, and I'm, I'm, I'm agreeing with that. Stafford hasn't been perfect, right? We've talked about it. He hasn't been. He's been part of the problem. But Matthew Stafford still has somewhat comparable numbers to what he finished with in 2016 if we stayed on the same pace. Also, keep in mind, Kenny Galladay wasn't here to start the year and the opponents you were going against. Now you're going against, I think you could obviously make case easier opponents. Matthew Stafford is getting a bye week. He's already got his first four games in, which is usually when you see preseason things like that. And he's got his target, Kenny Galladay, back in the line to continue to get healthy. So what if we see Matthew Stafford that is looked pretty darn good? I feel like in the last two weeks against the Saints and Cardinals, if you separate those games from his first two games, I feel like he's looked much different. The Saints game wasn't as bad as many people think. And I'm not just saying that. I have a breakdown of it. But also Dave Burkett even said that. And let me just support that point a little bit more. In the last two games that Matthew Stafford has played in, which I've said, I believe he's played much better. He's been more efficient. And also he has Kenny Galladay back. Matthew Stafford's stats look like this. Five touchdowns, the one interception. 63% completion percentage, which is 3% better than it is right now. A 106.6 rating, 476 passing yards. A 106 rating would tie last year's rating. That's what he's done in the past two games against the Cardinals and the Saints. Now, there were some injuries in that back end, no doubt, right? There were some injuries back there. But still, that's been his last two games. Like I said, he's looked much better. He's started to, you know, kind of find the groove. And also, Kenny Galladay returns, which has been a huge part of that offense. He even said that. If you watch the Cardinals game, the dude was really good. That was his best game so far this year. The first two games were rough. So Stafford with Galladay, you know, getting kind of back into the swing of things. He's looking better the last two weeks. So now you put him against easier opponents coming off a bye week. And he's still on pace already this season to throw 32 touchdowns and have a higher pass rating than he did in that 2016 year when you had eight fourth quarter comebacks. And if you compare last season's stats to this phenomenal start, I saw this on Instagram, shout out to them. Matthew Stafford nearly has the same stats in touchdowns, interceptions, and yards as he did to start the year back in 2019. Crazy, right? Crazy. And you know what also is crazy about this, the, all this? Matthew Stafford, you're probably thinking, well, his yards are kind of low. Matthew Stafford is on pace to have his lowest amount of passing attempts than he ever had with Jim Caldwell. In 2014, 15, 16, and 17, he had more passing attempts than what he's on pace to have right now. So Stafford's not even throwing the ball as much, so that's probably a pretty big reason that your yards are a little bit down. Also, in that 2016 season, the Lions had one of the worst rushing attacks in football, ranked 30th. So what I'm saying here is this. Maybe there's a reason not to give up on the season yet. I mean, Matt Patricia has obviously his back against the wall and he needs to prove himself, but maybe don't give up on the season yet. I mean, Stafford has arguably not looked that great because of what we saw last year. We're like, okay, we expect more out of this guy. And yet he's still putting up pretty solid numbers and your opponents lighten up. 
And you have an opportunity to go on a run coming up by week as you continue to get healthy. One thing that I see brought up with Matt Patricia and Bob and uh, Jim Call were this, you know, record versus good teams, record versus bad teams. Well, what I see always people bring up is obviously Jim Call is bad record against bad teams. We're not going to get into that. It is what it is. But he was 4-26, and 26, right? And people bring up Matt Patricia. Well, Matt Patricia is actually 5-12 and 12 against teams over 500. Right? Well, that's kind of crazy. But what's really here important here is this. People bring up, well, what about his record against bad teams? He has a terrible record against teams that are 500. But what people never bring up is that a lot of that reason that his record against below 500 teams is because he didn't have a quarterback. I'm not trying to say Matt Patricia's had all bad luck, but he's had some. I mean, let's think about it. 2018, Jim Bob Cooter and Matthew Stafford. It was Stafford's worst year ever. That was his first year was Matthew Stafford's worst year since basically his rookie season. 2019, he had Stafford for eight games. And if you look at the Lions, eight games. Going back to last season, they beat a playoff team. They beat the Chargers, two teams they should beat. They tied the Cardinals. Obviously, that hurt week one. You were one play away from beating the Chiefs. You were a call away from beating the Packers. And you're on a one-yard line to beat the Raiders. The only legitimate loss you had in your first eight games was the Vikings. You could have a couple plays away from being seven and one. Instead, you're three, four, and one, and then your quarterback gets hurt. And it's not like the Lions were losing to these bad teams with Stafford because they were beating them. What happened is Stafford went down and you just started piling up losses. What's crazy about that is if you look at it, you think, okay, well, hold up, all the bad teams were in Stafford's hurt. What if Stafford was healthy last year? What if Stafford stays healthy? He puts up his best season of all time. The Lions win at least seven, maybe eight games. All of a sudden, the pressure is probably a lot less on Patricia. There's still pressure, but there's much less. And we're saying to ourselves, okay, hold up. We know we can beat the bad teams. There's a lot of bad teams coming up. He's shown us at times he can beat the good teams. M25-1 is always brought up, right? It's Patricia's record. But what if Stafford was healthy all last season? Caldwell never had to go through Matthew Stafford all, all hurt. And this isn't about Caldwell. I'm just saying this because this is all I see online. This is all I see on media. And again, the Lions have to go out there and prove it. There's no doubt. But let's think about this. How about when Caldwell didn't have a quarterback? No one brings this up, but Caldwell didn't have a quarterback. And what happened? They went 2-14. and 14. They lost their first 13 games. The first year, Caldwell has a Super Bowl team. The first year they go down without their quarterback, that team goes 2-14, and 14, and they fire Caldwell, saying that they needed a leader. So all I'm saying is this. Maybe there's some reason not to give up on the season yet. Now, the Jacksonville game will tell a lot. If the Lions go out there against Jacksonville and they get waxed, or it's like, okay, this is ugly, that's a problem. But... Maybe don't give completely up on a season yet. I mean, heck, even the Lions wins that they had were obviously a comeback, so they're all close. I mean, the Eagles game, that was an insanely crazy, crazy game. The red the football team game was insane. I mean, you had Anquan Bolden at the end. There were all these really tight, close, contested games, but at the end of the day, the win and loss is all that matters. So maybe the Lions aren't done yet, and we should at least see what they can do. This is why it wouldn't have made sense to fire up during the bye week, because obviously your season's over at that point. At least if you're going to have them here, you might as well just have them here and see what happens, right? So let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Matthew Stafford, I've told, I've been told, is playing really bad football. And his numbers are still on pace to be pretty darn solid. So what if he just starts to pick it back up? What if we start to see Stafford from last year? What if Stafford from the past two games is what we see, you know, even better for the next seven or eight against easier opponents? The Lions could have something here. The Lions could potentially go on a little bit of a win streak. And all of a sudden, you're back in the playoffs. You're back in the playoff picture. And you've already shown me this year that you could beat arguably a playoff team in the Cardinals. I don't think the Lions season's done yet. Well, they have to go prove it. I, am I gassing you up? No, I'm telling you facts. I'm telling you straight up facts in this video. This isn't me hyping you up for no reason. This is facts. All the, Everything I said is facts. So let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Jaguars going to tell a lot. If the Lions look off versus the Jaguars, then hey, I probably ain't going to have much confidence. And I usually have a lot of confidence. But there's just a chance. It's still out there. Let's see what happens. We let Caldwell see what happens, and look what happened. We let Caldwell go through it. One and three, okay, it is what it is. Let's see if he can turn around. He turned that ship around, eight of the next nine. Now, you didn't beat any playoff teams along the way, but you turned it around, you were back in the playoff spot. The Lions are going to get opportunities to play teams that aren't playoff teams. They just really didn't have that in the first four games. Now they do. Let's see what happens. Let me know your thoughts, comments below. Thank you for watching, and I'm out. Are you kidding me right now? I had to put my helmet on for this one. Are you kidding? Look at this. Look at all these members. What? What? Yo, hey, shout out to all the members, man. Look, look how many All-Pro members there are. Like, literally, it's the whole screen, dog. This is crazy. The patrons, of course, the Hall of Fame members, man. Y'all got the gold color. It's kind of yellow, but it's supposed to be gold. Shout out to all the members, man. If you want to be a part of this, all you got to do is join the channel. But there are perks that come with it. Stay locked in the community tab if you are a member, because that's where a lot of information comes out. I appreciate all of you. What?